from Sky. Wait, can we start with the tech news, please? Um, ben White is still in contention, so he needs to train tomorrow to to make sure that he's available to play. And uh, for the rest, uh, no news. Everybody should be okay and ready to play. Uh, great news this morning that you signed a new contract until 2025. You must be very excited. What are your plans for us for the next few years? Well, I'm delighted because obviously from both sides we have shown um, a real commitment of what we want to do together in in this beautiful journey um, and the plans and the vision that that we share, the, the reason why I'm doing it and I think the club is doing it because we share the same belief, the same passion uh, and the same level of trust about each other and, and how we're doing it and I'm uh, really excited about uh, what we can do together. This weekend, talk me through how big this game is, because obviously for you, it's a fight for one of the top four places, and then for Leeds, they're trying yeah. to avoid relegation, so there's a lot riding on it, isn't there? It's a lot to play for, and uh, obviously the situation that uh, they are in, they're going to show how much um, they want to get out of that zone as quick as possible. And for us, is is the defining moment in the season. Everything after everything we've done, so uh, we want to capitalize in, in what we've done the last nine or ten months. And I wanted to ask you last night, great win for Rangers. You used to play for them. Your reaction and what it means to not only the players but also the fans. Well, so happy for them, especially about. Uh, what happened the last few days with Billy was the kid man. He was someone that um, I love so much and I have great memories and you just have to see the reaction everybody had towards him. So hopefully they can dedicate that big street to, to him and go and leave the trophy now because it will be, I cannot imagine how Glasgow would be if, if they managed to win that trophy. Thanks, Nick from the Premier League. Hi, Nick. Good Hi. afternoon. When we spoke after the West Ham game, you mentioned that you're pleased with the result but you highlighted that the decision-making and ball possession were not as good as you were hoping. Mm -hmm. Are those the two areas you're hoping to see improvement this weekend? Hopefully we can play um, better with the ball than, than what we did. It's true that as well we did a lot of good things in that game to earn the right to win it. Uh, the way we competed, the way we, we managed um, the strength of, of West Ham and how much we limited them. Uh, but yeah, every game has different demands and against Leeds it will be a completely different game the way they play, but um, really competitive as well. The game against Leeds back in December was one of the best you had this year. Was that game an evidence for you, the game that gave you this reassurance of how the team progressing this season? It was. I think we, we started the game really, really strongly. It's true that the context was different. They had a lot of COVID players at the time and they were strong with, with numbers. We were in a really strong position at the moment. Um, it would be different. Uh, now the situation is different. They have a new manager. They have changed a few things in their organization and, um, and never two games are the same. And from Leeds, do you expect the same style of play they played against Man City recently? Obviously, eventually it cost them or do you think they'll be a bit more safe? It's the game that uh, they changed, especially the formation because they never played at that before. So we are aware that they can do um, either of those. Uh, if you look at the history of uh, of the coach and what he's done, he's always been very consistent, very defined way of playing and uh, and uh, a really attracting, in my opinion, um, way to, to play football. So I'm expecting something similar. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Josh. Uh, a consistent message from you this season has been how the fans can be so important, especially mm -hmm. in the run-in now. Are you seeing examples of that in the stadium? And I'm thinking like the, the, the banner of the United game. And, and is it actually lifting the players, would you say? It is lifting and uh, that chemistry and that connection is, is growing every single week and you can sense that the players certainly do it and they talk a lot about the difference that it makes to play in a stadium or even when we go away from home, the incredible support that, that we get. Uh, that was something that we've been missing in the last two years. We discussed that many, many times and in my opinion that's the, the game changer. is their energy and, um, and their emotions toward the team that um, is really contagious. There's a local artist called Louis Dunford who's released a song called The Angel. I'm not sure if you're aware. It's gone um, from pretty viral on Twitter. Have you seen it? Are you aware of it? I have thousands and thousands of requests from all our supporters um, to go and do something about it. Um, and we want to listen to them. It's great because they are bringing all the initiatives now. We don't have to do anything. It's, it's up to them. They feel it. They want to earn it. They're doing a lot of things around the stadium as well as, as we all notice. So 
let's give it a push you know if that's what they want to do and that's what we want to to be seen and feel like it i think it's no better way than than go ahead and do it when you feel it um, I just wanted to ask about Gabriel. He's been linked this week with Juventus and Barcelona as well. We saw Kieran, Which Gabriel? Gabriel Defender. Okay. Big Gabby. Kieran, sorry, Gabby. Kieran, there's so many of them. <laughs> so many Gabbies in the team. Kieran was linked with Real as well recently. And obviously, there's a lot for you guys to do this summer in terms of contracts, the loan players coming back and sorting their futures out. But in terms of your starting 11 that we kind of consider now as the regulars, are you going into this summer viewing them as untouchable? In terms of possible clubs in. Well, what we want to do is we want to improve uh, the team, the squad, and uh, and obviously we know that uh, there is no a player there that doesn't have a margin to improve or evolve in in his way of playing and in his career. So we want to retain our best players for sure, and we want to add into that uh, more quality and depth to be more competitive. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, the Arsenal since certainly the Emirates have had a history of. Just as they're building something, maybe they've had to sell their best players. You saw it with Cesc, Sami Nasri, and all that. Is it important for this process that we, we know that you're trying to build here that mm. that doesn't happen? It's not a case of one step forward, two step back now, and it's just sort of built upwards rather than sort of losing players at key moments? Well, what we have to be really prepared is, is when we're going to do that and why we're going to do that. And we can control those timings and, and, and we can have the decision making on when is the right timing to do it and be prepared for that. So sometimes it's inevitable because you cannot offer the same competition level as um, they've been offered or because you think it's the right moment to, to make a move. But um, in principle, we want to maintain our best players and, um, and keep them and, and get better. James, can I take it? Mikael, congratulations on your new contract. Thank you. Can I ask you a bit about the timeline leading up to this? Is this something you've been discussing for a long time? And often with players, we say we talk about contracts at the end of the season. Hmm. What made you think it was the right step for you to commit to the club precisely there? The, the club was so decisive and um, and committed to do it now and they wanted to bring clarity starting from ownership uh, about what we were doing and show the stability and uh, and the commitment to the project and uh, and don't have to worry in the summer about any of that and when we want to recruit players or keep the players that we want that they can see a clear path in their future and there is no question mark there. so the moment that they um they questioned me about uh, what my feelings are it was very clear that uh, i was ready to come in here i'm extremely happy here and uh, and this job is still a lot to do and when did you tell the players? Did they find out at the same time as us? Did you tell them earlier in the week? No, they found out this morning. Uh, some of them they've been asking me in the last few months because they had questions about their individual futures because they read some news as well. And But it's not something that I like to be talking about. I want zero distraction about that. So this afternoon, that's done. Uh, it's clear for the future. And now it's just full focus on, on leads. The okay, last couple in the broadcast, Simon. Um, just on, on the summer, Mikael, I think Eddie was describing it as a, as a big summer. How important do you think it is and how useful would it be that your contract is sorted? You know, speaking to people like Bukayo, who needs to sign a new deal, you want to bring in new players, for them to know that you're going to stay here. Well, so we can explain because it's uh, something that you have to be explained uh, to the players. So when, when you are discussing the, the possibility to prolong the stay here or, or recruit somebody that is playing a different club, you have to explain how you want to do it and in detail. So they know and they expect clearly um, what they're going to be living if they join our club. And in order to do that, the club thought that it was the best moment to do it. And, and to be fair, I agree with it. And finally, Mark. Um, the timing of the contract in terms of last Sunday obviously beating West Ham meant you were guaranteed European football next season. We don't obviously have that which tournament yet. Was that linked in any way to, to the new deal? The club offered me the contract when we lost three matches. And that day I went like this, chapeau, and go. And that doesn't happen in football. Was, was that a part for you? For That's you? a part of what they think, the conversation that I have, the belief that they have in in myself, the coaching staff, in what we are doing, and the people that we have now um, owning this football club and, and leading this football club. And I haven't ever seen it, and I just got emotional when I see it because I, I just said, these guys are serious and these guys are committed, so I better push forward. We saw you after those three games. We could tell, obviously, you you're a bit down. When you get a contract offer like that, does that, just, does that almost drive you to now deliver what we're seeing at the moment? 
Words and facts are very different things, and in football they can be extremely different in relation to the results, and it's not the case. So uh, they meant something for many months and conversation that we had, and they put it in a piece of paper after that day. So for me, it's not a better way to describe the people that we have at the club. Thanks, Mark. That finishes the broadcast section. So farewell.